about him coming to get us. When everything is ready, he's going to come and take us to be with him forever in heaven. It was brought to my attention, and I've thought of this before, but uh, that's part one of, of what we know is the truth. Today I'm going to bring the harder part of that, maybe. Uh, it's I don't know that we have any in here today that are going to fall into the category that that need to do anything about what I'm preaching about today, but we be we as Christians that are growing and living and trying to endure to the very end, we need to know these things so that it keeps us focused. Uh, we can just pull up and aim and shoot, but it, if we want to hit the target, we have to zero in. We have to aim precisely. And heaven is one of those things that doesn't come automatic. We don't grow into heaven. We don't, the more we spend with our, our parents and our grandparents as Christians, it does make us closer to the Lord if we do something about it. The song that Teresa shared here this morning, the one we just finished, Nothing But the Blood. My friends, today that's how we focus. That's, that is the zero, the bullseye that we're aiming at. We cannot hit that, and we likely won't hit the bullseye unless we focus in on that truth today, what we're going to share here today. The title of the message is Heaven, or Hell is Real. We know heaven is real. We, we, we look forward to that. But my friends today, hell is just as real as that. And I want us to know right up front here today, most of the people, the majority of the people, are going to be following the Broadway to, to hell. The world today, from, from the time that Christ was here and told us this good news from the very beginning until now, the world has been trying, and we've seen from what Vic was sharing today, the world is trying to eliminate God's word. They don't want it to be effective. They're trying to take God, and, 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 and if they could, they could just do away with him completely like they tried to do with, with Jesus. They don't want him telling us in his word or in his spirit or us Christians that are following the, the word. They don't want us telling them that they're, they're doing wrong. They're gonna, not going to make it to heaven. The world would say, when we die, we somehow become pure and we're going to make it to heaven. And there's that theory out there that God would never send anybody to hell because he's a loving God. And, and they're, they're correct because it isn't God that's sending them to hell. It's their own choosing of which lifestyle they want to live. That it's their own choosing to do something positive with Jesus or ignore him. My friends today, whether you answer that question, what did I do with Jesus when he was here on earth, it doesn't matter if you didn't answer that question. You won't make it to heaven if you didn't. You will make it to hell if you didn't do anything. We don't have to do anything today to make it to this place that we call hell. And it is real. It is a place that is obviously real. Uh, Jesus, in my searching through looking at the Word and, and trying to do a, uh, I didn't do an internet search of it, Jesus spoke more about hell than he did about heaven. That tells me something right off the bat. Either we're not getting it, and our flesh wants us to, to do the things that are pleasing to the flesh, or we're very, very forgetful, and we don't remember some of the promises and the, some of the warnings that Jesus gave us. There is much to say about heaven, too, but hell has more vivid description of what is going to be waning for those who, who don't make it to heaven. The text today is two. I got one verse in Matthew 7. Uh, well, there's 
two verses back to back there, but one text. And uh, let me read that one. It's in Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many choo who choose that way. But the gate of the life, gate to life, is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few find it. I don't think we in here today, if we're claiming the name of Christ, and we're doing what we need to do, and we're obedient to the scripture that we read, have anything to worry about. Keep doing it. Do that. But I don't want you here today, if you are doing those things, to worry and to panic and say, I wonder, I don't know. My friends, the scriptures are clear. Jesus told us in John that he who believes in the name of Christ will be saved. So what, that's what we do, and we do it. Don't think for a minute, I don't know whether I'm going to pan out when I get there or not. No and believe the word that you're, that you're reading. If you are doing that, you are good. You are living for the Lord. But I don't want us to think that I'm a pretty good person. If you weighed my deeds, they would, the good deeds would outweigh the, the bad deeds. That's not going to cut it. That is a very a slippery slope to be thinking and believing in. We, we are not made, we are not cleansed by the amount of work that we do. The deeds that we're doing does not cleanse us. The things that cleanse us is believing in Jesus, nothing but the blood, living obediently to the word that, we're, that we read. Love your neighbor. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Those are the things that cleanse us. Those are the things that, that count. Unfortunately, we have a Satan that is ruling. He's the prince of the power of the air. He is that unfleshly enemy that, that we are fighting for. There's that warring of the soul. And he is there to do everything he can so that we stay on that broad way and not make it to heaven. That's the battle that is going on in our lives, in our country's life, in the life of every believer throughout the world. That is the battle that is going on. There is a daily battle to say yes to Jesus and no to Satan. Why speak of hell? Well, one thing is Jesus spoke of it more than he did of the, the, in heaven. So if he does that, we ought to share some of these things too, and for those kind of reasons that we might forget, we, the flesh is pulling at us, and the world's telling us that we, you don't need that. You can kind of ride the fence and have a foot in both places, and then you're good wherever, however it goes. Satan's going to lie to us. He's he. The scriptures tell us that he is the the father of lies. He is the uh, he is a liar and a thief and he is doing everything to destroy us, not to help us. So don't, don't believe anything that he says because it may sound good, but it's not. There's an ultimate goal is to tear down, uh, tear us down. I would like to read one more uh, passage of scripture here today. It's a, it's a little story. It's a parable that, that Jesus uh, shared. This parable is uh, just let me read it here then. It's in Luke 16 verses 19 through 31. This is about how heaven and hell and how there's a, there's a definite distinction here between. There's a lot of truth in this, this passage. Jesus said, there is a certain man, a rich man, who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen and who lived every day in luxury. At his gate 
lay a poor man named Lazarus who was covered with sores. As Lazarus lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to be with Abraham or be with God in heaven. The rich man who also died and was buried and his soul went to the place of the dead. There in torment, he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus at his side. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have pity, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue and I may in, uh, I am in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had everything that you wanted, and Lazarus had nothing. So now he is, being, he is here being comforted, and you are in anguish. And besides, there is a great chasm between separating us. No one can cross over to you from here, and no one can cross over to us from where you are. Then the rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him, send Lazarus to my father's home. I have five brothers, and I want him to warn them so that they don't end up in this place of torment. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them. Your brothers can read what they wrote. The rich man replied, No, Father Abraham, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will repent of their sins and turn to God. But Abraham said, If they won't listen to the Moses and the prophets, they won't listen even if someone rises, or rises from the dead. How true that story is. How many have been warned by multiple things in life that there is a way that is righteous and there is a way to hell? To get, be in heaven or to hell? If what has been shared with them, what, if what we read and what we have been taught is taught to them that's, that's as good as it gets. Somebody coming from the very dead back is not going to make any difference to them. I wanted to read that story there because it's very, it's, it lays out the guidelines for, for what heaven and, and, and hell are going to be like to some degree. It shows, first of all, that there is a, two places that are definite. There is no intermingling between the two. The only thing that I've seen in this story that I think is probably true and probably one of the worst punishments that can be had is that we that don't make it to heaven are going to be able to see what we've missed on the other side. We're going to be able to see Jesus. We're going to be able to see God the Father and see those that are enjoying that side while we're in torment on the other side. On the other hand, people in heaven are not going to be able to see back. There is no remembrance of, of wrong. There is no remembrance of sin. There is no remembrance of pain. We don't know those in our families that didn't make it. There is no looking onto that side. It's almost like a one-way glass that you can see through on one side, but the other side you can't see a thing. That, if there's anything of looking or back, they certainly can't come across. There is a, something that is too big to, to cross. There is no way to, to do it. I've heard people say, well, I'd rather go to hell where my friends are than go to heaven. Well, good luck with that. That's not what I'm seeing in the Word. The Word doesn't indicate that the people down in hell are going to be able to associate with each other more than, than cursing and doing gnashing of teeth and, and, and hollering and obscenities and all kinds of different things and they won't even know who they're doing that to because it's pitch black. There is no light. 
when you took Christ out of the equation, it's total darkness. It's not like us going into a dark room. I don't know, uh, Larry, uh, what it's like in a, in, in a, down in a cave or down in the ground when you're digging coal. Is it dark down there without your light? Okay. I, I'm, I'm imagining hell to be something like that. Not necessarily a coal mine, but a lot worse because it, it tells in here what it's like. And we're going to look at that in, in a little bit. So we need to be taught. We need to talk and speak of hell in our, in our fellowship together. It keeps us focused on the right. It keeps us knowing that what we're doing is important. We've got to point people to, to heaven or they'll probably make it into hell if we don't. It's that serious. It is that important that people just don't automatically make it to heaven. They automatically make it to hell if they don't do anything. That's, that's the automatic part. I think the speaking of, of hell makes us see the bullseye of heaven more accurately. And we can aim for that because the road is narrow and few, it said, that even find it. We don't, Satan's not going to tell you, oh, you're on the road, you're on the wrong road here. You're, you're on the heavenly road. We're going to come onto this narrow road and not even know it. It's unless we are in the blood of, of Christ, unless we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior and we're obediently following what he told us to do. We won't recognize that road. And Satan's not going to remind us. He's not going to help us in any way. He'll say, oh, no, come over here. This is, it feels better over here. So come over here and follow this one. And this one's wide. We, you know, it's spacious. It's like some of the California uh, highways that whenever we're watching a movie, uh, it'll show you a, 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 from a helicopter or a, or a drone or something. From way up, it'll show you the highway. And, and there's five, six rows of, of cars. And I thought, I just think, thank God I'm not in California on that road. Thank God. We're, we're, that's the Broadway. And, and I suppose there is some analogy to, to California and, and these big road, wide roads. I'm not saying that everybody in California is headed for hell, but there's a lot of people that are. Not because they're living in California, just because they haven't asked Christ to come into their life. And their leaders, are. some of them are headed in a path that's not right. And they're teaching and they're not allowing stuff that, that is similar to what uh, Vic has shared here today. But I want us to know, and I've read that Vic is correct on the fact that there are scattered among the bad candidates, the bad people in office, there are scattered throughout that some salt, some light, some good things, some people that are standing that are going to probably end up being chastised if they continue to keep their foot on the ground, but they're going to be victorious along with all of us who are staying close to, to the Lord. There is, there, there, the whole polit politics and government is not evil. There are evil tendencies and evil people in place. Far outnumber the ones that are, that are correct, that are trying to do the right thing according to the Lord. But their voice needs to be heard. Whether they follow it or not, it's going to do some good. They're going to see when things get dark and ugly in our country that so-and-so said this. Who do you think they will go and talk to to see if they can compare notes? It's going to be those uh, that have stood up and testified that we're headed down a bad path. We need to follow what God wants us to follow. Let's take a look at, at what this word tells us a little bit here. We're going to look at some things. Uh, as to what heaven looks like. And we've shared some of it already. Heaven is the state or abode of those that are wicked. 
That is the ending place for those who don't accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's basically, in a nutshell, all that, that, all that is the difference. We have to accept Christ. He is that only way through. We looked at that a week or so ago, that Jesus is the gate. Anybody that comes in in a different way is a thief or a robber. They're not, they are the only way to heaven is through Christ. There is no other way. That's a theory that is not very popular in our country today. They think that anybody from any place can be part of that. They can if they accept Christ as Lord and Savior. We have all, many different churches out there, and I'm not saying they're all headed for hell. They're all wrong except ours. What I am saying is that if they don't teach that Jesus is the way, they're teaching error. They're teaching wrong. Fortunately, in our country today, we can read the Bible for ourselves. People that are taught wrong can pick it up on their own. They can find the truth and they can follow it and they can be saved and they, can, they are part of the kingdom. Jesus said, I have others that are not of this flock that, that are mine too. So that means that all over the world, Jesus has people that are going to be able to follow him. Thankfully, it's not because we're a member of one church or another that makes us that. It's the being accepted by Christ into his church because I'm a born-again believer, because I follow obediently Christ. Further back, further looking here uh, at what heaven looks like, it's not just the grave as some would have you to believe. There is a group of people that say, when you die, we just end up like an animal in the ground. We become back to the dirt as we were brought out of the dirt. My friends, today I'm telling you that that's a lie. When you die, and if you're not making it to heaven, you're going to go to a place where it's not the grave. You're not just not existing anymore. You are going to exist forever in hell, being tormented, being tortured, being in total blackness. That's what heaven or hell is going to be like. Here's some things that I got out of multiple scriptures here that we're just going to take a look at. It's going to be total darkness. Darker than anything that you can have ever been associated with. And somehow, Larry, I think it's even going to be darker than, than, than a, in one of those coal mines. Total blackness. You couldn't tell who was touching you or what's touching you. You just know that it is total black. You don't see shadows of anything moving. It's just black. I don't know how they can do that and still have fire. God can do it. It's going to be burning. I kind of liken it as to lava where it's just in the ground and it's very, very hot. You're in it. it. It would be absolute excruciating to even touch that with your finger or tip your toe into it. But to be in that, surrounded with that, in total darkness, being bumped by other people that are in there and not know it, and to have to wonder if somebody could come and dip their finger, the tip of their finger in some water and put it on your tongue because it's so horrible. And then to top that off, to be able to see on the other side what I could have had if I would have adhered to what people taught me. What a horrible thing to know that forever and ever and ever you're going to see what you could have had and didn't have because you didn't accept, didn't do it. Because we wanted to satisfy the flesh. What feels good, we wanted to do. And, and we forcefully went that way and they denied the only way that we could be saved and that was through the blood of Christ to accept him as Lord and Savior. There's unquenchable fire. We only know of things that are fire and then they go out and 
This is non-stop the same. Unquenchable fire. It tells us that in Luke 3.17. There's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Can anybody tell me what gnashing of teeth is? I think it would be mean, nasty, talking to somebody, just kind of like some of our kids do to us when, when we talk to them and they just give us that gnashing of their teeth kind of an answer. I've had that from all the children that I've, that I've raised, so I kind of think, but I think it's going to be worse than, than that. But gnashing of teeth is not good. It is, it is bickering and fighting, and so all the things that you can think of that that were, there's chaotic in families where there's just fighting all the time and backbiting and all that stuff. That's kind of what heaven or hell is going to be like. There's going to be weeping too because they're, they're crying because they're in such agony and in such a mess that they're going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That tells us in multiple places in uh, Matthew 8, 12, chapter 13, 49, chapter 22, verse 13, and then chapter 5, 25, verse 30. Those all have that same thing that says we're going to have weeping and gnashing of teeth. Of all these things that I'm talking about, all the agony of the, the fire and the, and the, and the torture and, and blackness and all those things, I think there's one thing that we haven't mentioned that might be the worst of all. And that's we're going to be separated from God. All that in life, you remember the scripture, and it's also in Matthew, that tells us the rain falls on the just and the unjust? In heaven and hell, there's not going to be a, a raining on the just and the unjust. Only those that are in heaven are going to be blessed. We're past earth. We're past Heaven is not going to be like that. It's not going to be the rain falling on the just. There's nobody in hell that's going to get any blessings from the Lord just because God's giving blessings and it, and it spreads over. It, it, it's scattered. It, it falls over onto the, the under. No. Remember the, there's a separation there that people can't go from here to there. Nothing can go over from here to there or from there to here. There's a separation I can't imagine a life that God is not part of. Even for us today, it seems like, well, it's not so bad if I'm not a Christian. I'm still getting blessings. I still can breathe the air and all that. No, we're not going to get any blessings just because we're a part of God's total work. He's got specific things for heaven, and he's got specific things for hell. And they're going to stay in those specific places. They're not going to be shared or any exceptions made or any of that. It's, it's where it's at. Who's going to make it to heaven? Only those that confess belief in Christ. That is it. There is no... I want us to recognize that this... this life, this target that we're trying to hit of heaven, is not easy to do. There's going to be much in life that's going to try to drag us away from it. That are wherever you want to be, as long as you're doing good stuff, no. Only those who endure to the very last breath will make it. That's hard. That's, and I'm not scaring us today into thinking that if we goof along the way, we're done. We have a loving God who was more than generous with forgiveness. And when we fail, when we get off of the road, when we fall by the wayside, we don't have to stay there. And, and you can be sure, if you was on the straight and narrow path, if you got off of that path, the Holy Spirit is going to try to bring you back. He's going to remind you that you're off. Don't ever think that Satan reminded us. He won't. He's just going to let us... Go along merrily, being lost, and not try to rock the boat once whatsoever. But the Holy Spirit, if you have been there, he's going to follow and help you to try to see your way back. And he will forgive you, and you can make it. So until you breathe your last breath, 
there's hope of making it to heaven. People can be spoken to on their deathbed, and then they can, with their right mind, they can say yes to Christ, and they made it. They're going to be in heaven with everybody else that is following the Lord. The only, th you know, the parameters for heaven is birth to death. If you get saved in that span of time anywhere, you're going to make it. I'm not suggesting that we live our whole life for Satan, and then right at the last, when we, we have enjoyed all of the pleasures of sin for a season, that we can automatically think, well, now's the time for me to, to come to the Lord. Well, he can't take any of my... I, I still was able to have all of the fun and flesh, fleshly things out here. No. The Holy Spirit has to convict us of sin so that we can do it. If we do that kind of thinking, likely we won't ask Christ to forgive us. We've all read about the unpardonable sin. That unpardonable sin is sin that we've never asked God to forgive us. That's unpardonable. He, he can't pardon sin that we won't ask for. That's what that, that is. That's In a nutshell, all the theological thinking about that, if you look, that's what the unpardonable sin is. It's not uh, something out there. And, and, and if you're thinking that you maybe have committed that unpardonable sin, that just proves that you're, it, you haven't done it. There's no reminder for those that are not asking God to forgive them, except that the Holy Spirit doing that. If we are honestly thinking, I would love to be part of the Lord's kingdom, but I, at some point I, I had to have committed that unpardonable sin. That's proof, immediate proof, that you have not committed that sin because you want to get saved. That's proof. How do we make it to heaven? According to the word, it's pretty simple. According to life, it's very, very hard. Believe in Christ. Serve others. Obey him and his commandments. Love God and man. The passage that we read earlier just after this verse, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Do to others what you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all of that is taught in the law and the prophets. If you summed up all of what the law says, all the Ten Commandments, and take what the prophets have said, it's a one verse sum, summation of the total Bible, of, of what God wants for us to do. And it's obvious to look at after we've read that and see what it said. If we would do that scripture, if we would obey that scripture and carry it out, there, it covers all of the Ten Commandments. All of them. The bottom line today, the conclusion, hell is real. Just as real as heaven. There is a hell, a heaven to win, and a hell to shun. That's the truth of the matter. That's our life. That is what we are born here, and that's our one goal that we need to make if we want to make it to heaven. But we can't never forget, we can never forget that heaven is real. There are lots of teaching today that says heaven is not real even real. Heaven and hell are not real. It's all that we make it here on earth. My friends, there's nothing on this earth that's going to compare to heaven or hell. Our life here, uh, there's one group of people uh, teaching that, that living here on earth is, is hell. The grave is hell. And so that would make people say, well, I'll take all I can get now, so when we die, I'll just not be existing anymore. Now that's not how it's going to be. Our, we, are, we are given life breathed into us when God made man. He made us different than the animals. The animals have no soul. They're, animals are animals. 
when they when they die, they that this was their existence and they were put here for us to enjoy, to be able to take care of, and all that. But when they die, he makes more, and there's more of them. But when man dies, it tell, the Bible tells me that before I was born in my mother's womb, he knew me. He breathed into me life. That is soul and spirit. And so we all have soul. If we live first to God, we're going to go to heaven in our spirit, which is going to give us a brand new heavenly body. If we don't make it to, to heaven, we're going to be in hell with, a, with a, also an eternal body, an eternal uh, soul that is going to live forever. We're different and we're made that way. So whatever, it's very, very important for us today to know that I am eternal and I'm going to spend eternity in heaven or hell. Don't let the world or anybody teach you that those places are not real. I want us to know, if anything today, that heaven or and hell are both real. And, and, and people have a tendency to think heaven's real, but hell's not. If, heaven, if hell is not real, heaven's not real. It's that crystal clear. That's that way that God made us. There is two places. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any other reason for God, Jesus to come. He wouldn't have sent his son to suffer and die for us if it was if there was nothing after death, after we die. Life we earn through accepting Christ as Lord and Savior, and His blood cleanses us whiter than snow, as we talked of here in the one song today. He makes us whiter than snow, and that makes us acceptable to go to heaven. It's Christ's blood that was scattered unto us. He died for us in the past, in the present, and in the future. That's the only way we can make it into heaven. <clears throat> Our text today makes it pretty clear it's not easy to make it to heaven. We have to be intentional in everyday effort. To make it to heaven, we need to get on our knees on a regular basis. We've got to be opening the word and read what he's telling us. For as long as we can do it, do it. Nothing can take away the prayer, though. Nobody can, can say to you, you can't pray no more. You might not be able to stand in front of them with my hands crossed, and verbalize anything, but they can't stop me from praying to the Lord. There's nothing. That's how we can pray without ceasing, because nothing can stop that. That connection with God in prayer will keep us on the right path. We need to keep our eyes on, on Christ. That's the, this is the bottom line. Keep our eyes on Christ. In, in Galatians, or, uh, Hebrews tells us that in Chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We're going to close with this, with this verse. Therefore, since we are surrounded with, by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily besets us or trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. And this is the part that, that tells us how to do it. That is... That is what we need to do, and, and, and verse 2 tells us how to do it, and it's the only way to do it. We do this by keeping our eyes on Christ, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. And the rest of that verse I didn't put in here. Isn't that awesome to know for sure? We can know for sure by accepting Christ into our life that we have heaven in our path. We're on the road to eternal life. Don't let Satan knock you off, push you off. He can't do it if you don't let him. We just need to go and claim Christ, and when Satan starts pushing against us, that we, we cling to Christ a little bit harder. We go to him more. Nothing, no human can do it. We don't have to worry about Satan the scriptures to life. And yet that's the very thing that Satan tricks them into thinking that, that that can happen. That'll help take the edge off. My friends, what takes the edge off of death 
is Christ. That's what they needed. That's what is needed to have happen. Satan is nasty. He's going to make it hard for us to get to heaven. That's why the scriptures tell us the only those that endure to the end. When I was younger and read that, I thought, well, yeah, duh, you know. Yeah, only those are going to make it. Endure means that we've got to go through something to get there. It's not like only those who, who, who just hang on here and, and uh, that are wherever you want to be, as long as you're doing good stuff. No, only those who endure to the very last breath will make it. That's hard. That's, and I'm not scaring us today into thinking that if we goof along the way, we're done. We have a loving God who was more than generous with forgiveness. And when we fail, when we get off of the road, when we fall by the wayside, we don't have to stay there. And, and you can be sure, if you was on the straight and narrow path, if you got off of that path, the Holy Spirit is going to try to bring you back. He's going to remind you that you're off. Don't ever think that Satan reminded us. He won't. He's just going to let us go along merrily, being lost, and not try to rock the boat once whatsoever. But the Holy Spirit, if you have been there, he's going to follow and help you to try to see your way back. And he will forgive you, and you can make it. So until you breathe your last breath, there's hope of making it to heaven. People can be spoken to on their deathbed, and then they can, with their right mind, they can say yes to Christ, and they made it. They're going to be in heaven with everybody else that is following the Lord. The only, th the parameters for heaven is birth to death. If you get saved in that span of time anywhere, you're going to make it. I'm not suggesting that we live our whole life for Satan, and then right at the last, when we we have enjoyed all of the pleasures of sin for a season that we can automatically think well now's the time for me to to come to the Lord well he can't take any of my I, I still was able to have all of the fun and flesh fleshly things out here now the Holy Spirit has to convict us of sin so that we can do it if we do that kind of thinking likely we won't ask Christ to forgive us we've all read about the unpardonable sin that unpardonable sin is sin that we've never asked God to forgive us. That's unpardonable. He, he can't pardon sin that we won't ask for. That's what that, that is. That's In a nutshell, all the theological thinking about that, if you look, that's what the unpardonable sin is. It's not uh, something out there. And, and, and if you're thinking that you maybe have committed that unpardonable sin, that just proves that you're, it, you haven't done it. There's no reminder for those that are not asking God to forgive them, except the, the Holy Spirit doing that. If we are honestly thinking, uh, I would love to be part of the Lord's kingdom, but I, at some point I, I had to have committed that unpardonable sin. That's proof, immediate proof, that you have not committed that sin because you want to get saved. That's proof. How do we make it to heaven? According to the word, it's pretty simple. According to life, it's very, very hard. Believe in Christ. Serve others. Obey him and his commandments. Love God and man. A passage that we read earlier just after this verse. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. Do to others what you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all of that is taught in the law and the prophets. If you summed up all of what the law says, all the Ten Commandments, and take what the prophets have said, it's a one verse sum summation of the total Bible of, of what God wants for us to do. And it's obvious to look at after we've read that and see what it said. If we would do that 
scripture. If we would obey that scripture and carry it out, there, it covers all of the Ten Commandments. All of them. The bottom line today, the conclusion, hell is real. Just as real as heaven. There is a hell, a heaven to win, and a hell to shun. That's the truth of the matter. That's our life. That is what we are born here, and that's our one goal that we need to make if we want to make it to heaven. But we can't ever forget, we can never forget that heaven is real. There are lots of teaching today that says heaven is not even real. Heaven and hell are not real. It's all that we make it here on earth. My friends, there's nothing on this earth that's going to compare to heaven or hell. Our life here, uh, there's one group of people uh, teaching that, that living here on earth is, is hell. The grave is hell. And so that would make people say, well, I'll take all I can get now, so when we die, I'll just not be existing anymore. Now that's not how it's going to be. Our, we, are, we are given life breathed into us when God made man. He made us different than the animals. The animals have no soul. They're, animals are animals. When, they're, when they die, they, this was their existence and they were put here for us to enjoy, to be able to take care of, and all that. But when they die, he makes more, and there's more of them. But when man dies, it tell, the Bible tells me that before I was born, in my mother's womb, he knew me. He breathed into me life. That is soul and spirit. And so we all have soul. If we live first to God, we're going to go to heaven, and our spirit is going to give us a brand new heavenly body. If we don't make it to, to heaven, we're going to be in hell with, a, with a, also an eternal body, an eternal a soul that is going to live forever. We're different and we're made that way. So whatever, it's very, very important for us today to know that I am eternal and I'm going to spend eternity in heaven or hell. Don't let the world or anybody teach you that those places are not real. I want us to know if anything today that heaven or in hell are both real. And, and, and people have a tendency to think heaven's real but hell's not. If, heaven, if hell is not real, heaven's not real. It's that crystal clear. That's that way that God made us. There is two places. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any other reason for Jesus to come. He wouldn't have sent his son to suffer and die for us if, it was, if there was nothing after, death, after we die. Life we earn through accepting Christ as Lord and Savior and his blood cleanses us whiter than snow as we talked of here in the one song today. He makes us whiter than snow and that makes us acceptable to go to heaven. It's Christ's blood that was scattered onto us. He died for us in the past, in the present, and in the future. That's the only way we can make it into heaven. <clears throat> Our text today makes it pretty clear it's not easy to make it to heaven. We have to be intentional in everyday effort. To make it to heaven, we need to get on our knees on a regular basis. We've got to be opening the word and read what he's telling us. For as long as we can do it, do it. Nothing can take away the prayer, though. Nobody can, can say to you, you can't pray no more might not be able to stand in front of them with my hands crossed and verbalize anything, but they can't stop me from praying to the Lord. There's nothing. That's how we can pray without ceasing, because nothing can stop that. That connection with God in prayer will keep us on the right path. We need to keep our eyes on, on Christ. That's the, this is the bottom line. Keep our eyes on Christ. In, in Galatia, or, uh, Hebrews tells us that in 
chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We're going to close with this, with this verse. Therefore, since we are surrounded with, by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily besets us or trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. And this is the part that, that tells us how to do it. That is, that is what we need to do. And, and, and verse 2 tells us how to do it. And it's the only way to do it. We do this by keeping our eyes on Christ, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. And the rest of that verse I didn't put in here. Isn't that awesome to know for sure? We can know for sure by accepting Christ into our life that we have heaven in our path. We're on the road to eternal life. Don't let Satan knock you off, push you off. He can't do it if you don't let him. We just need to go and claim Christ. And when Satan starts pushing against us, that we, we cling to Christ a little bit harder. We go to him more. Nothing, no human can do it. We don't have to worry about Satan. The scriptures tell us don't worry about the ones that can kill the body, that can't do anything about your soul, but to worry about the one that can send you to heaven or to hell. That's the one. That's Christ. That's the only one that has that power to be able to do such a thing. So don't let the flesh, don't let Satan work in you to where you feel like it's irresistible, that I have to sin, I have to do this, I can't resist. In Corinthians, it tells us that in 10, chapter, chapter 10, verse 13, it says there isn't any sin that's, that's, that's out there that is not common to every one of us. But he can give us a way of escape if that temptation gets pretty rough. So don't let Satan trick you into thinking that we don't. If you have to, uh, the way of escape might be to put on your Nikes and, and run away from, from that mess. Don't let, don't stick around, don't, don't ta tamper, don't play around with the fire. Get out of there, don't mess around. Jesus can take us around it, through it, over it, under it. With him, nothing will, is impossible. We can do it. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you today thanking you for this awesome opportunity today to be able to cling to you, to be able to love you, to be able to be filled with joy when things are not going the way that we would like them to go because we know that our place has been in heaven with you. We have our home in heaven, not in, in hell, not in this life, but in the life to come with you. So let us aim for that target and keep pressing forward day by day in prayer and in obedience so that we can make it to that eternal home that you promised us. So that, that what, would, what I promised last week, that when our, when our place is prepared, when everything is ready, you're going to come and get us and take us to be with you forever. What an awesome day that will be. So help us to stay focused, to keep working toward that, and never forget that there is a hell to, that we have to shun, we have to stay away from, and a heaven to gain. So we just come to you right now thanking you for that. We ask your blessings on this day, our time that we've spent, our time that we're going to continue to be with you throughout this week. We just ask all this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.